So let's say you buy something on the Fab Marketplace, you hit download and there's no Blender file. We go ahead and try and download some of our assets here. In that download folder, there's no Blender file, there's no FBX, it's just the standard universal file. And then when we take it and drop it into Blender, click import and it's not at world center we look at the objects and all the scales is wrong it just it's it's not cleaned up today i'm going to show you how to clean up an asset like this so it looks more like this so to fix this first off we're going to take this model drop it into a fresh blender file and we can see here that hey look it's really tiny and stuff and the reason why i'm uh, making this tutorial is this asset isn't necessarily what I want to use it for and there's a couple things that I'm looking at to help me know that I need to fix this the first is that if I select any of these objects we can see here that the scale is different for every single piece or it, it's really tiny what that tells me is that this asset was made in some other software like 3ds max maya cinema 4d etc so there's no official blender file for this and on top of this when i look at this asset i see that it's four pieces and i just need the table i don't need the 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 extra little bits of pillars and stuff now the problem is if i go ahead and just select everything by making a box around it and then hitting Control j on the keyboard to bind it together if i go to my uv edit mode and i uh, hit a on the keyboard we can see that there's something weird happening we're only getting the UV of this portion here, but you would think that because there's a big cylinder here, we would get our UVs. And if I were to go ahead and select a face right here, hit L on the keyboard, we're not getting any of my selection over in my UV. And if I hit the period key with my mouse over the UV editor, it's, it's not even like there's a bunch of stuff way down here versus if i undo all of that by hitting Control z we're back to the beginning we uh, select everything top and bottom and hold shift and select the bottom and i'm just going to switch to edit mode i am using plugins for this tutorial so i do apologize for my non-plugin users uh, but we can see here that with the default objects kind of set up we can have all of these um, uv islands set up so Definitely some problems with this asset. Now I wanna show you how I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to my standard mode and I wanna center this up in the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and find my origin and I don't even, oh, the origin for this object is just it's weird, it's over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my top cylinder here and I'm gonna go to my edit mode and if you're not using add-ons, what you can do is just use this mode up here and switch between. Uh, I'm gonna select this very center face and hit Shift S on my keyboard and set cursor to selected. And now from here, the cursor is in the center. So whenever I spawn an object into my scene, it's gonna put it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift S and then, or not Shift S, Control A and uh, Shift A keyboard shortcuts and add an empty and then from here I'm going to select everything under all of my geometry and I'm going to uh, then select my empty and hit alt p control p keep transform I want to make sure I'm parenting to object keep transform so now everything is under this empty and I am now going to take this empty and bring it to the center of my world but my cursor is off in the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna hit Shift S and do cursor to world origin right here. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this empty, hit Shift S again, and selection to cursor. Now, because I do a lot of board game trailers, I don't mind that the bottom of this, uh, the, the anchor and axis point of this table is at the very bottom because I typically do a lot of my animations at the world origin so I'm I would just bring the world down just a little bit you could theoretically just bring the empty uh, up just a little bit by just like finding the spot right here and just holding shift and uh, hitting GZ to bring it up there and kind of center it up but I'm not going to do that because uh, I want this to be exactly at 
uh, the world origin for the very top of my table here. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and go under my hierarchy and select everything and hit Alt P and do clear and keep transform. And I can go ahead and delete this empty by hitting the X key and delete object. So now we have our stuff in the center of the world, which is exactly what I wanted. Now from here, I'm gonna go to my face mode and make sure that all of my UVs are set for everything cool. Now I'm going to make a material for this and we can see that the material for this object is called 02 under underscore default. There is no organization here for this asset. So what I'm just going to do is first switch to my blender file, go to my materials here, and I'm just going to delete all of this stuff. I don't need any of these materials. I'm just going to make something completely from scratch. So just delete. So now there's no materials assigned to this object. Let's go back to my view layer here and go back to object mode. Now I'll just go ahead and take this table top and I will just call this SM underscore table top. And the reason why I put the beginning SM is static mesh. I use Unreal, this is the force habit I get into. And under this SM static mesh table, I'm gonna hit new for my material and I will rename this material M for material underscore antique table suite. Now I'm going to go to my shader editor shading mode. And now we can see the table. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add my materials that came with this object. So I'm going to hit control shift T on the keyboard and find those materials. I have them right here. Now, when I did get the files, they were already, they were some weird default name. I just went ahead and renamed all of these files. I'm not gonna worry about naming them exactly what they need to be right now. I'm just trying to set this up for a project. So now we have that set up. I am using the plugin Node Wrangler and that is a free add-on. If you go to add-ons and type Node Wrangler, you can see that right here. So now if I go ahead and zoom in, hey look, the antique table is already set. So now I'm going to go to all of my objects and that don't have materials on it. And then I'm going to hold control and select my last one. This is my main selection. Now go to my material mode and then under this drop down menu, do copy material to selected. So now that material is applied to everything. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to my layout mode. I'm gonna hit the home key to center up everything. Hit Z2 on the keyboard to see my material preview. And I now need to set up my scaling for this object. So from here, I'm gonna just select my first pillars and I'm gonna zoom in here and hit, uh, we're gonna hit control A and then hit uh, apply scale. And we wanna make sure that that does not affect any of our UVs. So I'm gonna actually switch to my UV editor, uh, just double checking stuff. Yeah, that didn't apply anything, amazing. So uh, in our UV mode oh, with my mouse over my viewport, I'll hit Z2 on the keyboard to switch back to my material preview. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll hit shift S, control A, there we go keyboard shortcuts, apply the scale and make sure that it didn't mess with the material, make sure it didn't mess with the UVs like so. Okay, cool. And then go here to the very bottom bits. And then we are going to uh, hit control A, shift A, oh, come on, shift A, control A with your mouse over the thing, over the viewport, apply scale. Cool. That didn't break anything. Face that didn't break anything. Okay. And under this table here, we'll hit control A, apply scale. And now I'm going to go through and just double check and make sure that my scale here is set to one. And on everything, it looks like I missed this, these guys right here. So we will just go in and hit control A with my cursor over my viewport again. And it looks like everything is set up. Okay, cool. So now I have this table all set up. Now, one thing I do like to do is I will hit shift A on the keyboard and I will add an armature and I will add a rigify human. Now this is also part of your plugins here. So I'll just add this for now. And the reason why I do this is I wanna make sure that the scale looks rel decent relative to a human scale. I'm like, yeah, that looks like a, a normal human size table. So I'm cool with that. Uh, that looks good if you want to add this go to your preferences add-ons and type rig 
Regify and you want to add this and this just helps me make sure that my scale of my object is um, around the size of a human. Now I'm at the stage where I want to combine this all into a single mesh and the problem that I found while doing this and why I'm kind of making this tutorial is that when I go ahead and select all my stuff and hit uh, control J, we're going to lose our UVs and our textures here. So if I go to face mode, we can see that everything looks normal in our UV editor. But when I hit control J, something's happening with our materials where we're losing our UVs. Now at this point, we have our table, it's all still separate into pieces, but all the scale is applied. So what I am going to do now is hit control space bar to leave my maximum view mode here. And and if you uh, don't know how to do that, if you hit control space bar with a cursor over a different view, you can increase the, uh, the view scale of your viewport. Uh, if I go to any of my objects here and I go to my data property, we have this UV map tab. Now, if I select any of these different objects, we can see here that the name changes by just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these UVs. So I'll call this mesh sm table uv sure whatever i'm gonna go ahead and double click on that hit Control c to copy and then i'm gonna go to all of my other pieces right here Control v and Control v Control v so now our uv data across all of the meshes are the same name so now if i go ahead and select everything we can see here that we have our uvs here and if i go ahead and select everything and hit control J. Everything is now matching for our UVs and we have our table. Now I did kind of inverse that selection. So I'm going to undo that really quick. And I'm going to make sure that I select everything uh, below, on top of the SM table and then the SM table top as the very last one. And when I hit control J, that will make sure it keeps the same name. I could just rename it, but I'm just lazy like that. So now we have our object and the UVs are pretty much set and ready to go. Our textures look good. We'll hit Z8 on the keyboard to go to our cycles preview. And let's go ahead and add an HDRI. And it's looking like a table. If we go ahead and add a light, let's add an area light. We have a table in the scene, crank the light. Hey, look, it's a table. And the very last thing I'll do at this point is I will go ahead and rename this to SM underscore antique table. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my layout mode. We'll hit control S to save. And we'll call this blender underscore antique table rebuild or whatever you wanna call it. Hit save blender file. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit file, export, FBX, make sure I so turn on selected objects and we'll just call this blender antique table or SM underscore antique table and then hit export FBX. And now the file is fixed and saved and I have a version that I bought from the Unreal Marketplace that was all messed up and weird. And now I have my own version that I can use in any other 3D software that I want. And I just wanted to make this tutorial because I'm sure someone is probably going to buy something on the internet and be like, what the why is this broken? So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below if you like these little behind the scenes deep dives of just actual BS that happens when you're doing 3D art. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to make more stuff like this. And until next time, as always, with the final tip, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.